friends, I'm DJ Lance Rock, and I have to say, Rock and Roll Grad School is awesome! This is Rock and Roll Grad School with your hosts, Heidi Hedquist and Luke Poling. When do they get to sing my way? I guess let's start with Sparks because that's something we can talk about till the cows come home. Um, or Christine been... McPhee moves off my balcony. Or, right, well, exactly. can I interrupt already and just yes. say nice Please. job on the Noel interview? Thank you. Thank you. Nice job. Thank you. It it's it's interesting uh, that the the response f- people have had that I I think I and this is my my stupid idea that we're going to bring the world together um, one dumb question at a time. Oh. But gotta uh, keep trying, my friend. Yeah, we exactly. do. We try. Uh, but I thought it would sort of help lay to rest some of the many odd little rumors and things that have uh, sprung up over the years about Noel. And it seemingly is just, it just goes to show that you can disbelieve anything you, you really put your mind to. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, the main rumor is one that you didn't even uh, specifically state, which mm-hmm. I thought was so interesting. I was wait, but it, you didn't need to, because I think anybody, but, but the idea that, Oh, it was really Russell. Right. Yes. And, I, I bought that Noel single and then the album way back when I was in college in 1979. I never thought it was Russell. And I always wondered how that rumor persisted and why. So I, I think you guys did a great job of covering that and all the other things about her. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, she was just great. lovely. Like, she was so fun to talk to. Just, she made it easy. Like, we thank you for the accolades, but honestly, she made our made our lives easy. It was just an easy conversation. Absolutely. You can tell. Yeah. So happy. He's so happy to be getting, you know, the recognition that exactly. that album deserves. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting that if for, I feel like it's bubbled under for years as this weird novelty and this sort of whispered, like to check your, uh, your sparks, uh, loyalty card. Do you know of this record? Have you heard this record? What do you think of this record? Um, and now it gets to come out and be its own thing in a world where people and the way to kind of connect and people communicate, it can get passed around much quicker and it can get appreciated. And um, especially the the new version with the demos where you can, you can hear Russell singing them and <laughs> it's a different voice. Uh, a totally different voice. Yeah. But it's just kind of lovely that, you know, it, that she gets a second act with this record that she gets to, and it's the kind of thing where you're always like, I, just, I hope I'm around to hear that when whatever well, it is. The, the great thing is that when I was listening to it before, it was always on YouTube and with a lot of breaks and it was never clear. And if I would listen to it when I'm walking. So I, even though I downloaded it, it'd still go off and stuff. But with the release of the CD and having it on Spotify, you can just hear the whole thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you can hear the production, which is clearly they worked on that and the remastering. And it's just a whole new record, and there's so much to it. There's just mm-hmm. so much to that. It's, yeah, it's so great that it's getting the recognition that it should have had years ago. But now you're right. I agree with you. Now is the time because it's so easy to get this stuff, or it's possible to get this stuff on the marketplace in ways that just weren't possible before. And I feel like to that end, Spotify and certainly the Edgar Wright film, which is where I really sort of, uh, went off the deep end with them Mm -hmm. uh, where it was just, I wish somebody at 14 had sat me down and said, I'm going to introduce you to one of your favorite bands right now. Um, And, you know, that the fact that these, this stuff is now available and it sounds so good. And I I know they don't make them as headphone albums, but some of them are really great headphone records. There some of them are amazing headphone records. But Heidi, do you have a spark story or are you just new to all this? Or are you, have you become a big fan? 
Oh no, oh, I. We're, oh yeah. no, we are both like late bloomers. We're we freely admit we're late bloomer Sparks fans, but we are went hook, line, and sinker off the deep end together. So I knew of Sparks. I was um, a very dear friend. Had I I okay? So I had been introduced to Sparks years ago and knew some of the songs. Of course, knew Cool Places. You know, was a Go Go's fan. All of that. Knew some of the the hits, but also had a, a an ex who's a very good friend who had been playing some sparks for me and I was like oh yeah, yeah okay yeah yeah whatever but it just kind of you know when someone's just didn't pay attention I was like yeah they're cool whatever whatever fine yeah blah 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 stop playing that and then with Luke we watched the documentary kind of we tend to watch things sort of simultaneously in our own little worlds one just so we can see who watches things first and two we just I don't know we're joined at the hip from far away and both went over the deep end together and um, just off the rails in love with them and, you know, kind of see ourselves in them sometimes, weirdly. Um, and saw them here in Detroit at the Royal Oak Music Theater. When was that? Shortly after the film came out. Found myself front and center um, with some fans who'd been fans probably since they were, you know, much younger than me but I had dove so deep into the catalog and so deep mm -hmm. into the history that could run circles around all of them and was right there belting out every word with everyone just I think that's one of the really great Russell things I, I think that's I know that feeling <laughs> I, 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 I think that's one of the really great things about them though is that people there's many great things about it but one of them is how people have come to him from all these different places and yeah. different eras you know oh yeah i heard that dance music i thought that was you know or you know or the old of course the old timers like me who you know from the 70s but or 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 of the later years you know and now yeah. the whole edgar wright phenomenon yeah. i think it's so yeah. great i think it's, it's so, great. so great and it is it, it's so fun and then you you do you know it's again your favorite band's favorite band we talk about bands like that a lot you know and I was a huge Duran Duran fan so I also knew you know because I'm also madly in love with John Taylor and always have been so here we go knew, <laughs> you know have to pick between them right yeah. but um you know knew them through that and so then you start talking to people there you know oh well, yeah I knew them and it just you, you, like you said people come at them from many angles and then you have those shared you know, experiences for many time and you can go down these paths that you don't necessarily well, get with other bands well if we do talk about the project that i'm currently working on yes. which is the uh, youtube show that's one of the things that motivates the show right there yeah. is that just talking to the fans from so many different perspectives and there's people who've looked at it from a literary perspective and people have broken down the arrangements and then there's people who've looked at it in terms of these big meta meanings that they and then there's people who just like the music yeah you know yeah. and i think that's one of the great things about it is the way the fans yeah. have responded and hear so much personal mm -hmm. when they listen and i talked to someone who was uh who had self-defined neurodivergent yeah. and he had a whole interesting perspective about it i think it's great i think it's yeah. just great yeah what do well, you think it is sorry what do you think it is that makes it it becomes somebody's favorite band and that uh, the the you see an obsession with them that you don't see with other bands and other musicians is it because they're not you know they're big they're not that big that they still feel very personal and you feel like you should be pressing copies of their records into people's hands saying listen to this this will change your life i think there's two or three reasons um but i think part of it really reflects what we're talking about right now which is this idea that, um, you know, when you listen to the music, you can just enjoy it because it's really well-constructed, fun pop music or experimental music or whatever they do. And you can just enjoy it because it's just really well done. But the more you listen to it, the more you start to hear things. And they've never said, this is what we're trying to do. They've never said our goal is to create this art artistic construct with uh, these objectives. They've never even come close to anything like that. They just put out their music. So what that translates into is that everyone can put their own interpretation on the music because there's you listen to it and there's clearly something more than just that wonderful surface music, but they've never told you what it is. So you're listening to it and you're thinking, 
oh, I'm starting to relate to this in a way that makes sense to me. And then you almost feel like they're talking to you. And that's, they can't be talking to everybody, but you, <laughs> you create this personal relationship because you start to hear it in a way that's very personal to you because you've chosen to go beyond the superficial. And I had friends in high school who were just never willing to get beyond the superficial. I used to take Kimono My House and Propaganda, which were their two big albums in the 70s, two of their three, mm -hmm. and I had them on a cassette player and I would go to bed at night and I would just play it. On one side of the cassette was one album and on one side of the cassette was the other and I would just play it and play it because it was speaking to me. Yeah. And I didn't know how, but I heard more than just those great catchy songs. So I think that's part of it. Um, and part of it is just that there, you know, there, there's many other aspects, but I just wanted to mention that one because it relates mm -hmm. to what we were talking about before. The and personal connection. Yeah. yeah. And it's, I love the idea that you are being subliminally uh, just fed this stuff. Mm -hmm. That you wake up in the morning and you're like, maybe I should never turn my back on Mother Earth. Right. <laughs> that, that just, you know, that this yes. is. Also, I was wondering how the hell you fall asleep listening to Amateur Hour, but that's me. <laughs> well, um, well, <laughs> but you know, the other thing, though, uh, is that they've said, or at least once or twice over the years, they've said, everything you need to know is in the, is in the songs. You know, meaning there's, there's not all this hidden meaning, all these great concepts. It's just right there. They're songs. And but they they tend to deflect a lot. They don't they don't they don't really say what's what's going on a lot. But you know, um, they say, well, it's just just good music. That's that's what we do. We create pop music. They like pop music, and but I I don't think anybody accepts that. No. And it's so easy to go down rabbit holes. And it, is the podcast your excuse to start digging your own rabbit holes? No, I've been digging rabbit holes with the band say. for <laughs> know, 50 years now. <laughs> no, um, the, I've been listening to them a long, the, well, I should, should, I, should I just blatantly plug the name of the podcast? Yes, of I course. Okay, yes. The, okay, it's a YouTube show. Uh, it's called Sparks Entertainment and Art. And it's taken from a song of theirs called Strange Animal from 2008, where they had a line in there that said, entertainment or art, one should know from the start. And I thought that was such a great line. And I thought, wow, in one sentence, they've summed up everything about their career. You know, the way they're perceived, what they're trying to do, their own inner conflicts about their music. I don't know if that's true, but that's how I heard it. Yeah. And as I listen to it, it's really entertainment and art. And one, there's three things that motivate me to do the podcast. One, well, before I say that, um, so... Okay, let me just run with that then. Uh, so, you know, Sparks Entertainment and Art is really what it's about. And so the three things that motivate me on the podcast, there are three things that motivate me. One of them is how do they balance entertainment and art? How have they done it for 50 years? It's just amazing to me. And everybody, that gets to that point we were talking about before about everybody hears them a little bit differently. You know, mm -hmm. some people hear the great art. Some just like to dance. That's all cool. It's all cool. There's no right or wrong. But they've there, there's a great quote from Ron from a number of years ago where he said, uh, we've had one foot in the art world and one foot in the pop world. And as a result, we've managed to alienate everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that was such a great quote. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But that's that's a big thing that motivates the show, it, you know. Uh, in terms of the rabbit hole, I've been down it for a long time. I've, I don't spend as much time as I used to trying to get others to listen to the band because they either will or they won't. I've learned right. that. Right. Um, there are two other things that motivate me to do the show. But my my basically, I want to look at that. I, I love the perspective of the fans and what they bring to it. And I try to bring that in. And I can tell you all kinds of great stories. But, you know, the, the one I like to say is there was somebody who was on the show who... Um, who had given up her art career, but she saw Sparks about two years ago and said, if they can do it, I can do it. And yeah. she, her art career is blossoming now. Yeah. Wow. That's so cool. It's so, so cool. cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing is um, th this idea of what does it mean in the context of, of culture and uh, music and everything as society? What are the implications of a band that has performed at this high level for over 50 years? What does that mean? So those are the things that I'm exploring on the show. Sparks Entertainment and Art. 
for those who would like to check it out. <laughs> and the other thing I love that it's, I guess, a recurring feature is trying to interview, I think you said you're trying to get them, every single drummer who has played with the band. That was a previous project. Uh, and I okay. did do that. I, I did all that, but one or two. And that was in 2014 when I was blogging. And I did get to talk to almost every one of the plumber, uh, one of the drummers. And that was it really been awesome if you interviewed every one of their plumbers, too. Oh my God. I, I did. I did. That was a separate, you know, I didn't know we were going to talk about that. That was a whole separate series, the Sparks Plumber Project. Yeah, but Between the hair and the mustache. Hair, I mean, seriously, that lot, actually you know. would have been a big job. <laughs> that would have been a big job, yeah. Why'd you pick the drummer? I'm a drummer. Oh. Yeah, so I think you can even... Sweet. See oh, my drums is. back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there they are. There. Yeah, our house is nice. a little bit of a mess. We had a, a little bit of a house fire, and we're still recovering from Ooh. it. Everybody's oh, safe or okay. good, but um, yeah, our house is a little mess. But back there, in my drums, I still play in bands. Very nice. Uh, so that's why I did it because I love their drumming, and I can. I, I, I there's so much to their drumming that that again, I don't know how long we're talking tonight, but I can go on. That's a topic I love to talk about. So. But they've had some tremendous drummers with them. It's been it's, interesting the people we've talked to who's worked with them, who have worked with them, the, they all, and it's not drinking the Kool-Aid and it's not because we're fans, because we've talked to a lot of people who've worked with bands that we worship and adore. They all worship and adore them. Mm -hmm. They all just little hearts pop off of their heads whenever they talk about them. Did Most you, of the drummers. Did you? Who did you find that anybody that you find that was like? Oh. Uh, sure, John Mendelson. Okay. They're very one of their very earliest ones. He wasn't in that category quite so much. Because it, in fairness, their personalities, right? We love them because they are personalities, and I would expect it not. It would have to be chat. It's chat. People find Luke and I challenging, and I yeah, would not well, he, expect he's a it strong to be any person. other way. Right, and we would yeah. want it to be that way. No. It's all good. Yeah. yeah but uh, that was a, that was a series of blog articles I did. And yeah, I still get a lot of people who contact me and say, I love that series. That's awesome. So yeah. Well, so. That's one of the things that I love in, in any music interview program of any sort, that it's coming from someone who is a musician and can kind of speak the lingo and that the questions go beyond, you know, we always say in our, our query letters, like we want to know more than where do you get your ideas from? and go down these rabbit holes of you know a certain sound what you're going for how do you you know and um one thing we as of uh, well i guess as soon as we found out we could do it we did it that anyone who has any connection to sparks or a love of sparks we just at some point in the interview say the floor is yours please uh you know testify and all of them are more than happy to uh, take the mic and, and uh, preach the good word, if you will. Yes. Um, and we immediately cut them off and, you know, cut yeah. them the off. They say they don't like them. So that's probably why everyone, little hearts and flowers pop off their head, because we know that we hang up on them if they don't like them. Well, in that, at that time, when I was doing the blogging, I also talked with Martin Gordon, who was their bassist on their uh, Kimono album. And he he wasn't the biggest fan either but you know mm. i put it up there it's, i'm yeah. not here to edit it i want to no, you know here to either. give him their perspective of course and we're just i think he's kind of found peace over the years is my and impression i yeah. mean certainly that's and you know you talk about the idea of uh the formative experiences and becoming sparks as everyone knows that that you are going to be fumbling in the dark for a little bit as you try to find your voice authorial voice musical voice all of that kind of thing and when you work in all the half nelson stuff yes i could see that there are some perhaps hurt feelings or toes might have gotten stepped on yeah but i i don't think that they realized that they were that it was the two of them until later on in their career you know mm -hmm. i think as their career i think they always felt that they needed to be in charge and it was really their concept but i think how they wanted to express themselves really was able to come to fruition when the technology caught up to them yeah. mm -hmm. and when the technology caught up to them and they could really become a duo and fill in the rest with either electronics or live musicians while still touring at this extremely high level in a band concept i think they found that that was their uh that was their sweet spot 
because their their concerts are great, you know, I and mean, they're a full band onslaught, but their records have a very different feel. And I think that they achieved the balance that they were seeking. I I would personally say all the way back, uh, I think the Giorgio Moroder years is what set the template for where they are now. And I could bore you to death by going through the logic there, but I will not do that because then you'll have no listeners left. Well, and it's interesting, um, like you said, the amount, the depth that people will go to, that it is a almost Stanley Kubrick level of, of, of obsession. Yeah. And there's someone, and I, I have it bookmarked because I always feel like I start reading it while I'm in line somewhere or waiting for a doctor's appointment. And I'm always like, I got to sit down and really focus on this and the breakdown of each record and the themes and the, the whole idea that uh, number one song in heaven is an entire life put in the form of a record and it go tryouts are for the human race as the uh, fertilization and uh, creation process to obviously what you're going to hear when you arrive in heaven. Um, what led you to think about it in those terms? It, this person's essay saying that this is what this is and, and, you know, and he, uh, I'm assuming it's a he, uh, tons of, you know, links and references and, uh, you know, it's, it rivals, you know, it, it rivals, you know, Dylan nerds and Beatles nerds, uh, which, which is so interesting because of their status in, in the musical world. Um, so th three quick comments. One, I'm a yes. big Kubrick fan. Two, yeah. Um, I had not made that realization or that, that thought hadn't occurred to me until just about a few years ago. And when I saw somebody mention it, it was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> right, really, that, that is what it's about. And, and that's how I hear it now. And then the third comment is um, going back to what I was saying about their whole history. I think the Noel album, and I know that, uh, you know, was is a big part of that history because that's where they were saying what can we do with these electronics they couldn't tour at that time they were kind of limited in what they could do but they were starting to really experiment and that led i think that led to where we are today mm -hmm. so has your oh go ahead oh, go, go ahead what? has your appreciation clearly deepened but in that the amount of attention that people give to everything. Are there records now that you look at and go, yeah. you know, I feel like plagiarism is one that everyone's always like, not, not the greatest idea, but I get it. Um, are there any way you're just like, doesn't, doesn't do it for me? Oh yeah, sure. No, I'm, I don't just listen to everything and just accept it as brilliant. Um, plagiarism, uh, you know, it's fun to listen to now and then, you know, mm -hmm. uh, very rarely I put it on, but every now and then I do, it's kind of fun and skip some of the songs and it's okay, you know, but that's about it. That's about it. And then there are definitely a few others that have never really resonated with me. Um, uh, one of them in particular does have a big fan base, which is the Introducing Sparks album. Um, people love that album, but I listened to it and I was like, uh, I don't know. I, my, my own conclusion with that album is that, well, it was a joke. They were kidding around. And if I listen to it that way, then I can appreciate it because I remember the context when it was made. But um, there's a couple others, but then there's a couple that aren't very popular, which really resonate with me. And one of them is the music that you can dance to album, which most people just kind of say, mm, it's okay. You know, mm -hmm. but to me, I think it's a pretty important and brilliant piece of work. And what's interesting is that when they're doing this last tour, they're playing like two albums from their most popular period and then they were playing, or two songs from their most popular period, Bon Voyage and This Town. And then they did two songs from this completely obscure, nine, you know, 1985 or 86 album that nobody even listens to. And they're, they were great, you know? Mm -hmm. So I love the fact that they go their own way. Mm -hmm. And they, they could, e there's so many classics they leave off of the tours, you know, and so yeah. many great obscure songs that they play. There are at least two or three obscure songs every tour that they play. Yeah. I think that's totally to their credit. I agree. What is it about that record that that you connect to? I mean, and I'm sure if they were here, they would say, you honor me, I feel unique. But what is it <laughs> about that album that really... Well, that's a great song. Oh, um, my God, please. Yeah. Um, what it was, was I think they were starting to figure out what their voice was, and they were willing to be a little bit more experimental on that album. And... To some people, it sounds like, well, they didn't, re didn't really work. But, you know, some of the songs like Shopping Mall of Love, which is one of the ones that they do live, 
Mm-hmm. That's a, that's a really kind of weird song, but it was cool because they were trying to do something that was just very different. And there's a few others on there like that too. So I just thought it was interesting. Like even at the time, I liked it. And change, change is on there. Um, mm-hmm. And change is one of my top ten Sparks out songs. You know, so that's a big plus. Um, I just thought it worked. You know, uh, let's. There's a couple others I can't think right now, but of course, yeah. When you yeah. when you're put but, to it, and... but uh, you know, it was just because here's here's one other aspect about it that I really like. When you listen to their albums, they're usually produced in a certain way, and and often they seem to have like a thematic sound, even if the lyrics aren't strictly thematic. But it seems to all fit together nice. On that album, the theme seems to be no theme at all no concept it was just wacky and all over the place so let's get funky that was the one you know all these weird songs that you know how did they fit together and in my mind they don't really but i think all of that made it work in some strange weird way maybe that's a reflection of me more than anything else but no just, you, no go ahead no, no I, you're, I, you're you out go. of the role go I, ahead i got nothing you go no go, go. Stop. no go this, oh is, my what God. We this is what we do. This is what we do is we just get in a fight and then yeah. it's all over. I'm seeing how the sausage is made. I know, right? Yeah, exactly. I, I apologize. Awesome. No, wow. this is this is where, you know, this is where it ends up. So what's what how's the response been so far to the show? To your show? Let's to back to show. you for a minute. To to my show. Um it's the response is great. People love it. Um but yet there isn't thousands and thousands of followers and i'm trying to figure that one out and i think part of it is because i kind of caught caught in a certain format because i'm it's like my exploration of all this <clears throat> so i'm trying to make it a little bit more user friendly with shorter episodes and you know kind of you know maybe a little focused on just a single topic and things um so i'm trying that but on the other hand i'm trying to figure out is it just that you know there's thousands and thousands of sparks fans and somehow i haven't been able to build that base so but i'm just going to keep doing what i do and keep trying to make it more you know user friendly but understand that it's it is what it is um the sparks model yeah exactly (laughs) exactly do what you do what you feel you have to do and then somebody will make an Edgar Wright movie out of me there you go that's what you got yeah (laughs) that's what you know i mean seriously like right that's what we that's what we've kind of done and it's amazing how it's kind of worked that it's suddenly things are snowballed for us and so many things yeah no your show's great but i love your show i have i listen to it on walks um but let me just say i'm not complaining you know right yeah no 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 no. you didn't sound like you were complaining at all no no i love the i get positive response from everybody and really great i also started a facebook page which you're all welcome to join. I yes. think Luke, you did. I, I and it's kind of related to the show. And Perfect. it's the same thing. It's small, but the people who are on it really love the conversation. So small it is what mighty. it is. Small yeah. but mighty is what we we always said. And it it was nice. We, we, one thing we always love have loved and continue to love is all of we know of all of our fans are authentic. They're real. They're authentic. They're actual fans. Yes. They're actual yes. listeners. And they've grown and grown and grown. And then we got really excited because we've started to get haters and it's kind of fun. That's I feel like that's when you know. That we're like, oh, people don't like us. They think I'm really annoying and I, I'm really? kind of flattered by it. Yeah, not, not everybody. I mean, once it gets me everybody, I'm going to start to cry. Don't get me wrong. Right. But a couple here and there, it's kind of nice because it's like there's enough people to start getting, but it's taken a long time. And then we're like, okay, all right, but stick with what, we know, but I, but I also get, we're doing the same thing you're doing as far as working the pro like working the magic, but also what else can we do to engage everybody? So right, right. helping each other, I think is good. You're, you're, that's good that you can have that attitude because my wife says I'm too sensitive. And I think if I got haters, I'd be sad. I know it's my whole life. I wanted to be a movie star. So I had, I learned at a very young age, I had to be ready for it, but obviously right. I wasn't a movie star yet. But when Edgar Wright starts, you know, making movies about starts all of calling. us, right? Right, well, I've got to know, be ready. So. Everything I do is with a very positive and inclusive um, 
approach, you know, and I really am trying to make it more accessible because yeah, it's the logarithms and all that, but it's also about the content. And I just Precisely. love the idea that people will get to hear this content. Yes. And, you know, there was a debate on Facebook a while ago or on some of the others, one of the other sites where somebody was an old timer and they were like kind of dissing the folks who came late. So I wrote a post on mine, just said, everybody is welcome here. Everybody is a Sparks fan. And that's the end of the discussion here on this site. And that was this post that probably got the most responses of everything I've done on there. That's and that's how I want it to be. Yeah. Well, yeah. And the, and the beauty of Sparks is that they have morphed and changed and evolved and evolved and allowed for new people to come in and come and grow and change and the beauty of Sparks and the beauty of what you're doing, the beauty that we're doing is they and we all screw up the algorithms because yeah. there's so much variety and difference and change and evolution. And we don't, the algorithms don't know what to do with any of us. Well, you, uh, you, you have a great way of putting it and you're right. It's a positive thing. And it really is yeah. people who, who enjoy it. And I know the, it, it is interesting sometimes when you see that you look at the YouTube stuff, you can't look at it too closely because you see, mm -hmm. oh, <clears throat> they listen for the average listening time was on this one, four minutes. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. on. I, I know intention spans aren't what they used to be with four minutes, but yeah, no, among, yeah, non-smoking. Uh, <laughs> right. Males who part their hair on the right, we kill, we do great. Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, it's, uh, <laughs> but the idea that I love, um, that I think just comes through in the, the name of the show and what you're doing on the Facebook page is this idea of a, a celebration. Yes. And I, I think so much more, you know, I, um, I, I feel like art in general is, is not in many ways, not appreciated enough. And um, I always go back to that Kurt Vonnegut quote where he said um, that he wanted written on his tombstone the only proof he ever needed of God's existence was the music. And yeah. I think the idea of just saying like, this is all doing something good and it's putting it out there. And even the most brilliantly ridiculous of spark songs, you know, my kids love Brenda is always in the way. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> love it. You know, when my kids were little and we would take car trips um, it was shortly after uh, Little Beethoven, and that song, uh, Your Call is Very Important to Us, Please Hold, Please Hold. Yes. They loved it, and we would play it for an hour straight. <laughs> and then my wife was okay because it kept them quiet, and you know, but they loved that song. It's mm -hmm. funny, isn't no, it? It, I mean, and it's funny because they love the exact same line that I love. Uh, you want to go, you want to see a movie? Not quite. You want to move around or too tight? Mm -hmm. uh, just brilliant. Um, well, he but is I, brilliant. He is a brilliant lyricist. Oh, the, uh, I mean, the lyrics are for all of them. Like best, like arguably one of the best lyricists of all time. No question. Like no question. Like you could not fight that. No, but you know, people who don't want to appreciate it aren't going to hear it. But true, uh, you know, there's there's no question, and there, there's a lot of depth, and we you know we could go th we could talk all night. Mm -hmm. Oh, very easily, very yeah. easily. But then I had someone on the show who had really broken down their arrangements, and he talked about how he uses the music, you know, uh, and uses the different parts of the music to convey something, and it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Yeah. What say yeah mm -hmm. yeah but i'll show you how good i am on the marketing aspect so i've gotten to these shorter shows and i've gotten to uh you know even doing like youtube shorts you know one minute things trying to really spice it up keep it going you know regular all that mm -hmm. uh, the next show i'm going to record is going to be the entire thing is going to be an exploration of one song Ooh. i'm going to have four Perfect. people coming in from different perspectives about one song so probably that'll probably another four minute or I guess. Uh, That's cool. Very, that'll be, yeah. but, you, no, but I think that'll be really cool. Oh, well, it's, you know, that's the great thing. As you know, the great thing about doing your own show, you can do what you want to do. You can do what you want. Exactly. Yeah. Are you going to have someone who's never heard it before? No, it's going to be uh, that song that I mentioned before, coincidentally, Strange Animal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So Paul Barrett will be there and he'll give his MetaSparks perspective. And Becky Jones, who was on the show, she's really somebody who's looked at the lyrics and she'll give that perspective. And Tor Harold, who had been on the show, will give it that musical perspective. Awesome. And then I'll give it on it. Perfect. That's I can't awesome. tell you what it is. There's got to be some surprises, right? Of course. Right. No, that's perfect. No, I don't have to tell us anymore. Sparks, entertainment and art podcast by Monty Mallon is available right now. You can find them on YouTube if you just search Sparks, entertainment and art. And there's a Facebook group you can join. Just search Sparks, entertainment and art. World Grad School is produced by the Professional Production Company. Please be sure to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts because your impassioned review is just as honest as us standing backstage waiting to come back on for the encore. For more information, you can check out our website, rockandrollgradschool.com. And like everyone else, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Today's show was recorded and produced by Heidi Hagquist and myself from our world headquarters located on the second floor of the professional office building, centrally located downtown. Our reluctant executive producers are John Sauvey and Sandy Stone. Our willing executive producers are Rachel Allen and Randy Jeanette. Our intern is Zach Jackson. This one's for Philippe. Thanks for joining us. Good night, drive safe. May all your favorite bands stay together. Mm-hmm.